Hi! Hello, it's Prachi here. I am still kind of recovering from illness and I didn't wear any makeup at all today so you will not get to see my face, you're just getting to see this. But since my voice is still like only halfway to recovering, I figured I would film this like really short video of my stationery collection. I think there are only like two of you who have ever commented about like how much you like fountain pens and inks and that kind of stuff. So this video is for the two of you as well as for me because I love this stuff. Anyway, without any further ado, let's get it. Okay, so I've kind of like moved everything aside and I think the first thing that I want to do is I kind of want to explain what this journal is. So last year in 2021, I bought this Hobonichi Techo. Hobonichi notebooks have what's called Tomoe River paper. Despite Tomoe River paper being really, really thin to the point where it's almost see-through, it holds fountain pen ink really, really well. I found that I could write on both sides of Tomoe River paper with a really dark ink. It literally never bled through. And that is kind of incredible. Lots of people are constantly hyping up Tomoe River paper. They're constantly hyping up Hobonichi. So I bought into the hype. I got one. I used it like all of last year. And then as 2021 was about to turn into 2022, I knew I was about to go on a no buy year. I knew I also had like student debt that I needed to pay down. And so I was like, you know what, Prachi? Don't get the Hobonichi. Get some other random notebook that's the same size as the Hobonichi that you can like put in this so you can continue using this case, but don't spend money on this Hobonichi with its Tomoe River paper. How good can this paper actually be? So like an idiot, I decided that I was going to buy this Stalogy notebook instead as like my daily planner or whatever the hell. And um, I hate it here. <laughs> I have tested every single ink I own in this notebook and not a single one of them sheens at all. And so I really regret not getting a Hobonichi again. Actually, I don't know. I need to do like a little bit of research to see if there are companies aside from Hobonichi that make A6 size notebooks with Tomoe River paper, but like I'm never making this mistake again. Having spent like a full year writing every single day on Tomoe River paper and Tomoe River paper alone, I'm a spoiled bitch now. I'm never going back. So I bring all of this up because when I show you what each of the inks are, I'm going to show them to you in this like notebook with its paper that sucks all of the life out of the sheen. And this paper is honestly, it's fine for inks that have no sheen in them at all. Like this particular one, as far as I know, doesn't have any sheen and it looks great on this paper. But for the inks which do and should have a lovely sheen, I'm gonna whip out my old Hobonichi notebook and try and show you some of my like writing from last year using that same ink so that you can see what the hell I'm talking about and see how that ink would perform on Tomoe River paper. I guess showing it to you on this like whatever the hell random paper is in a Stalogy notebook, Stalogy, Stalogy, I don't know. It's useful because if you don't have Tomoe River paper, like this is probably how most of the inks would perform on whatever the hell paper it is you're using. So that's really why I brought these notebooks up. Now let's talk about the actual pens and inks that I own. As of right now, I own seven fountain pens total and they're three different types. All of them are what I would consider to be on the low end of fountain pens. So the very first pen I ever bought is this one here. This is the Lamy Safari limited edition in mango. And as a South Asian whose favorite fruit is mango, I would basically be like spitting on my ancestors if I ignored a mango pen. I write in cursive and I actually write in like very cramped, tight cursive. And because of that, I just find that the Lamy Fine Nib, which by the way, all of the writing on this page was done with the Lamy Fine Nib. It was actually done with this mango pen in question because I was trying to find like the perfect mango colored ink that I liked to accompany this pen. And I just find that the Lamy Fine Nibs are just a little too thick. I own only two other fine nibbed pens. They were my second and third ever pen purchases because like a week into using the Lamy Safari, I was like, oh, this is not the ideal pen for me. Let me try some of the other brands. This is the Twisby Eco, which is currently not inked up. I just cleaned it out last night. This also has a fine nib. And then this Pilot Metropolitan pen which also has a fine nib. And let me tell you, despite the fact that all three of these are fine nibs, 
none of them are the same thickness as each other. The Lamy Safari is by far the thickest fine nib of the three, followed then by this Twisby Eco, which was made in Taiwan. And then the thinnest of the fine nibs is this Japanese Pilot Metropolitan. So this is writing done with the Lamy Safari fine nib. This is writing done with the Twisby fine nib. You can see it's a lot thinner. My cursive is a lot more like controlled and nice. And then this is writing done with the Pilot fine nib. This is what I like my writing to look like. This is how closely together I want the letters to be, and this is how crisp and precise and fine I wanted it. So yeah, anyway, these three pens, this Lamy Safari, this Twisby Eco, and this Pilot Metropolitan, all in fine nibs, they were the first three fountain pens I ever bought, and for the entirety of 2020, they were the only three fountain pens that I had. And then, in 2021, I went through what I call a white pen phase. I wanted, from time to time, because variety is the spice of life, a sort of like cleaner, more simpler pen clipped up to my pen hook. And so these were the next two pens I bought. This white Lamy Safari with a extra fine nib. Here you can see like the classic triangular grip that teaches you like how to correctly hold a fountain pen. This to me, it looks like if a pen were an Apple product. And despite the fact that I own no Apple products, I do dig this aesthetic. So I'm very, very glad that I got this pen. The second white pen that I got was this Twisby Eco. And I gotta say, like, I absolutely love this pen. Like all Twisby pens, it has a hexagonal cap with the red logo. And my absolute favorite thing about Twisby pens is that you don't need to buy a separate converter. The barrel of the pen itself has the capacity to suck ink up. And I just feel like that's so convenient and lovely and I'm like 100% here for it. And then by the end of 2021, I had entered my special edition green pen face. I find like green to be a much maligned but brilliant and beautiful color. And I just really, really loved it a lot last year for some reason. I wore a lot of green nail polish. I wore a lot of green eyeshadow. I liked green pens. I liked green inks. Like I bought a lot of plants. So even my room was really green. Like 2021 for me was like a green year. <laughs> And so it was really interesting to me that two of my favorite pen companies ended up putting out limited edition pen releases that were also green. So here we have the Lamy Savano, which is actually a re-release of a pen from the 1980s like Lamy lineup. Unlike the little like gray washer on this white one and this mango colored washer on this mango pen, it has like a black washer and then even the nib, instead of being silver, is actually black, which I just think is so cool. It was in my pen rotation for months and I'm so glad I bought it before like I started my no buy year. But it was by no means my last pen purchase before my no buy year started. That distinct honor goes to this. I bought this pen right at the end of December, right before my no buy year started in like a straight up panic because I needed this pen. It is Miss Twisby Eco Jade and I would die for her. Like she is beautiful. It is actually like ever so slightly translucent the way that actual jade would be. Like light does actually come through it in a way that is very, very gemstone-like, even though like this is just made out of straight plastic. And I love that little detail. I loved using this pen. I had it inked up with Diamine's Tropical Green for pretty much the entirety of spring. So the three pens that are currently inked up right now, because I don't like having more than three pens inked up at a time, are my Pilot Metropolitan and these two Lamy Safaris, one with an extra fine nib and a fine nib, which by the way, both this Twisby Eco and this Lamy Safari are predictably both extra fine nibs. I'm actually like, I would say pretty happy with the current size of my like pen collection. I will say it does slightly annoy me that I don't have like a blue pen. Like a part of me wants to get a blue pen and a red one just so there's a little bit more like Roy G Biv action going on in here. But that is a problem for future Prachi who no longer has student debt. I am very curious to know like what pens have you guys been using if you are into fountain pens? And if you're not and your answer is like, I've been using a big pen that I bought in a 12 pack for $2 or whatever, although God, is any pen $2 now given the like a bonkers inflation currently going on in America? I don't know. But I'm here to tell you that whether you are a user of bougie gold nibbed fountain pens or just the user of some random ballpoint pen that you accidentally stole from a grocery store one time when you were signing your signature on your credit card, you're valid. Okay, I feel like I spent a million years talking about pens. 
Let us now zoom through the inks. The brand that I have the absolute most of is Pilot. Pilot inks are that bitch. They flow really well out of the pen. They write really smoothly. They dry super fast. Also, their bottle design, chef's kiss. These full-size bottles are genuinely so pretty. They're also heavy as hell. Like, you could definitely accidentally commit blunt force trauma with these guys. And I really think it's fitting that I start with this baddie right here because this is actually the very first bottle of ink I ever bought. Did I nearly just almost cause a huge massive ink spill that I only managed to prevent from happening by quickly grabbing onto this bottle and ruining both my hands and this label for the entire rest of its life? I sure did. So you're just gonna have to deal with my ink stained hands for the rest of this video. I'm just glad like the whole bottle didn't topple over onto carpet. But the point that I was trying to make before I was so rudely interrupted by my own clumsiness is that I wanted a really, really bright, vivid purple. Specifically, I wanted a purple that no matter what light you were in and how fine of a nib you were using, it always would look consistently purple. So I didn't want something that could be mistaken for a blue ink. I didn't want something so dark it could be mistaken for black. And I also didn't want something that could be a magenta. I wanted a straight up purple. And this Pilot Iroshizuku ink in the color Murasaki Shikibu was the hands down winner. It met all of those requirements. I almost always have this pen inked up with this color. And this is probably the ink bottle that I have used like the greatest amount of just from the sheer fact that it was the first ink I ever bought. There's nothing ultra special about this ink. There isn't like a really cool sheen or some like super interesting shading property. It is just a really, really nice, vibrant purple. And that was exactly what I wanted, and it was the perfect first ink for me. And in the unlikely event that I ever actually finish using this bottle up, I will go right back out there and buy another one. The second full-size Pilot Iroshizuku ink bottle that I have is this. The shade color, and I'm probably mispronouncing this, is Tsukushi. It's the Japanese word for the horsetail plant. I don't remember if there's anything particularly special about this ink in terms of like sheen, but I do know that I spent a really, really long time looking for the perfect brown ink for me. And a lot of people's like favorite brown ink, it's like super hyped up in the ink community, is by um, a company called uh, Jay Herbin, and I think it's called something like Lie de Thé. I got a sample of that ink, I tried it, and it is like a weird, sickly, yellow, gray toned brown. And that's just not what I was looking for at all. What I was looking for was like a nice, warm, almost like red toned brown, and that's what Tsukushi is. I love busting this out in the fall. Like the moment we hit September, one of my pens will be perpetually inked in this color for several months on end. And honestly, I just think it's really, really sad that Pilot decided to discontinue this ink, especially because this was the only brown ink in their entire line and they haven't replaced it with anything yet. If you are a fountain pen and ink person and you have a favorite brown ink, tell me what it is down below because I'm going to be very sad if and when this bottle ever runs out on me. So next we have these mini size Pilot ink bottles. These full size bottles are 50 ml. These ones are I believe only 15 and they often come in sets of three. I have no idea which ink was in which set, so I'm just gonna go over all of them from the darkest to the most vibrant. So first we have the only black fountain pen ink I own. This is Takesumi, which I believe translates to charcoal bamboo. It's not like a really sharp matte black. There is a slight softness about it. Every once in a while, especially if I'm using Tomoe River paper, I will catch a little bit of a red sheen when I use this ink. But overall, this is just like a very great sort of like basic ink. I know that like whatever set this was in, I did not buy it for this ink. I bought it for whatever the hell other ink was in that set, like one of the blues that I wanted to try. I think I filled up a pen with it like precisely once in my entire life and it was just to kind of like test the color out. I really don't use black ink in my fountain pens. <laughs> Hi. Okay, it is later in the same day. I had to stop because I felt like my voice was giving out. Um, and it's now nighttime, so this is actually my room lighting. But don't worry, when I show you the actual samples of ink written on paper, those were all filmed in like natural daylight. So you'll be able to get like an accurate representation of color. But basically like a couple of hours have passed since I filmed the previous part of the video. I've also painted my nails, but you can tell it's the same day because I still have 
like that spilled purple ink all over me. So the next darkest pilot Iroshizuku ink that I own is Shinkai. Shinkai I believe means like deep ocean or ocean waves or something along those lines and that is honestly the perfect name for this ink. This is like a beautiful deep sort of grayish blue and it's honestly like the exact color of Baltimore Harbor on a good day. On top of that it has just the most beautiful red sheen. You might be able to catch sight of it a little bit on the edge of this bottle and it's definitely very very visible on Tomoe River paper. In fact I personally found the sheen and just the general color of Shinkai so stunning that like I know for a fact that when this mini size bottle runs out I know that I'll definitely end up buying like a full 50 ml size bottle of this. I know I said I'm not a big fan of black inks like I pretty much never use them and so my standard go-to quote-unquote professional dark ink is actually Shinkai. The next pilot blue that I have is Tsukiyo. No idea if I pronounced that correctly. The TS like really throws me off in Japanese every single time. But I believe the name of this translates to like moonlight or moonbeams. And compared to Shinkai, this is lighter and it's much more green leaning. I would describe this as kind of like a dark teal with a little bit of a red sheen that's visible on Tomoe River paper but absolutely invisible in my Stalogy notebook. While this is definitely a really really pretty color, it's not my favorite blue. So after this mini bottle runs out, I don't think I'll ever buy like a full 50 ml size of it, but I'm glad to have this mini size of it for now anyway. Next we have my favorite vibrant blue. When it comes to like an actual bright royal blue, Asagao is my absolute favorite. I don't know if you're able to pick up on this pronounced red sheen that this ink has along the rim where it's dried, but that red sheen gives this already very vibrant ink just like a beautiful, lovely, almost glowing quality, especially on Tomoe River paper. I believe the name Asagao means morning glory, and I think that's pretty accurate. I think this has that sort of like blurple quality that morning glories have. As you can hopefully see in the images where I'm actually like writing with this ink, this ink is like decidedly blue. Especially when you compare it to Murasaki Shikibu, like it becomes really really clear that this is actually a blue ink. It's like the bright royal blue of my dreams, and this is definitely one of those inks where when I finish the 15 ml I will buy a full-size 50 ml bottle. It's honestly like very surprising to me that I don't see more people use this color but I guess that's because a lot more people are enamored of the next color that I own which is the iconic pilot Konpeki. I actually don't know what Konpeki translates to. Maybe it translates to something like blue skies. I think that would be like a pretty accurate name for this color. It's a much lighter blue than Asagao. It really is like the sky on like a clear sunny day and I don't know if it's visible on camera but you can once again and see like a slight red sheen along the rim of the bottle. I think the sheen on this is a lot less visible when you're actually writing. Like it definitely shows up once in a while on Tomoe River paper, but it's not as obvious as the sheen on say like Shinkai or even like Asagao. And I find it really interesting that there is like so much love for this ink because I think it's just okay. Like if I were to rank all of the blue inks that I own by Pilot, I think it would probably be something like, you know, this with Shinkai and Asagao like battling for first and second place for my absolute favorite blue and then Tsukiyo that sort of like dark teal color and then right at the bottom would be Konpeki. Much like Tsukiyo I will not be buying a full-size bottle of this once this is done. And then the last pilot ink I own is Yamabudo. Much like Konpeki, this is a very very hyped up ink, but this one to me, unlike Konpeki, it kind of seems worth the hype. I see what's interesting and cool about this ink. So Yamabudo I believe is actually the Japanese term for the Crimson Glory vine, and honestly like I don't really understand that naming at all because um, this is definitely not what I would call crimson. It is a straight up pinky purple magenta ink, and it has a really interesting gold sheen to it that I've only ever seen on Tomoe River paper. In the Stalogy notebook it just looks like a flat magenta ink. Still very pretty but it doesn't have that sort of like special almost like gilded quality to it. 
as beautiful as I think this is, as special as I think this is, as much as I enjoy using it in like spring and summer especially, I have another pink tone ink that I'm much more likely to use than Yamabudo. And I guess maybe I should talk about that next since we're done talking about all of the pilot inks. The ink in question is this one. So there's no English on this bottle at all because this is an ink imported directly from Japan that I bought at Wonder Pens in Toronto, Canada. If you are in Toronto, by the way, Wonder Pens is such a fabulous store. Of the seven fountain pens I own, I bought five of them at Wonder Pens. I bought Murasaki Shikibu at Wonder Pens, as well as my two Sailor inks, as well as this lovely bottle of Kyono Ito's Cherry Blossoms of Keage. Kiage? I don't really know how to pronounce the name of that place in Japanese. This ink is an absolutely lovely muted pinky mauve color. It's much darker than any cherry blossom I've ever seen. It's also much darker than the label. As far as I'm aware, it doesn't have any particularly interesting like sheening properties, but the color itself is such a beautiful, interesting, lovely muted shade that I fell in love with it. This Lamy Safari with an extra fine nib is currently inked up with this. I have been using this ink all spring but it's muted and dusty enough that I was also able to like use it a lot in the fall it still kind of like fit the vibe and aesthetic and I just like I genuinely love this ink so much I don't know where this is available in the US I'm sure any place where like you can buy inks would have Kyono Ito inks it's such a special and beautiful color in my humble opinion. It's also one of the few standalone inks I own, which is to say that it is the only ink that I own from a particular brand. I don't own anything else from Kyono Ito. The one other standalone ink that I have is this guy right here. This is the Twisby Special 1791 ink in orange. So the 1791 collection was named that because it's a reference to the year that the Chinese novel Dream of the Red Chamber was published. It's considered to be one of the like four great classical novels in China. And I believe there's some like really famous like color illustrations associated with the novel. And so Twisby came out with a collection sort of like honoring interesting colors from that collection. Now each of the inks actually has like a Chinese name. You can see those characters down here, which is like supposed to be some reference to the novel. But instead of like translating that Chinese name into English, to give us the English version of the name, Twisby just decided that the English name was going to be the color. So this is just called Twisby 1791 Orange. The top of the bottle has the iconic Twisby logo and it is just like a straight up vibrant orange. There's no crazy like sheen or shimmer. I think it does like a decent-ish job with shading, but there's not a whole lot of it. Like it's not like Diamine's Autumn Oak, but it is a really nice, bright, vibrant, orange color and I often end up filling my um, Lamy Mango pen with this. Okay so the next brand I should talk about is Diamine. Diamine? Diamine? I don't actually know how to pronounce this brand's name. So let's start with the less fancy bottle. This is actually plastic. It's the only plastic bottle of all of the inks that I own. And so now I'm wondering if maybe the smaller sizes come in these plastic bottles and the larger sizes come in glass bottles or maybe if all of them come in plastic because that's just the way Diamine rolls. But either way, this is Diamine's Red Dragon. It is, in my opinion, such an interesting ink to have in a pen like a Twisby pen where the entire barrel is visible because it honestly kind of looks like straight up blood, which depending on your personality, you might find super creepy or super cool. Red Dragon and Tsukushi are like my quintessential autumn fall inks. I almost always have like two pens inked up with these throughout the autumn months. I kind of feel like bad sometimes when I use one of my like special shiny sheeny interesting inks in like the Stalogy notebook and the paper ends up converting it to like a really flat color with no sheen. I'm just like wow what a waste you know but because Red Dragon doesn't like have any of that going on it behaves perfectly and just as it should in the Stalogy notebook. I've actually been using it for like a hot minute now. Will I ever actually buy like a bigger size bottle of this if I run out? Mm, I don't think so. I haven't actually tried a lot of different like dark red or maroon inks. If you have and you know of any interesting ones, let me know down in the comments below. 
The other two Diamine inks that I have are in glass bottles, and they're part of Diamine's 150th anniversary collection. The bottles have this really interesting triangular shape, and initially I like couldn't understand why they did that to us until I realized that I think they assumed people would buy the entire set and that the set would make like a perfect circle. But I am not a baller, and even if I were, I don't think I would like buy a whole ink set just because. So I only have two of these bottles that fit really awkwardly next to each other to make like a cheese wedge. So first let's talk about my favorite for the past couple of months. This is Diamine's Tropical Green. Now don't be fooled by the way that this looks in the cap. This is actually a really really nice and vibrant green. Like it's not a yellow toned grassy ink. It's not like a pine colored ink either. I would describe it almost as like an emerald green because you know how emeralds tend to sometimes have like a slight bluish quality to them. That's the kind of green that tropical green is. And I'm not sure if you're able to see on like the edge of the rim here that there is a pretty pronounced red sheen to this ink that's really really visible on Tomoe River paper and which adds like a really really interesting dimensional quality to the ink. But unfortunately in my Stalogy notebook it just ends up being kind of like a flat green. For the past couple of months like I've had my Twisby Eco Jade constantly filled with tropical green. Literally only yesterday I finally decided okay let me stop using tropical green for a moment let me give this pen a rest and give some other ink colors a fair shake but genuinely I have been like loving this ink and using it like crazy. The next Diamine ink that I own from the 150th anniversary collection is Regency Blue. This is I believe the darkest blue ink I own. It's a navy so dark that it's almost blue black like you can see here on the lid it it kind of almost looks like a black color. When you compare Regency Blue to the next darkest blue that I have, which is um, Pilot's Shinkai, you can see that Shinkai is not only lighter, but it's a lot more like muted and gray in tone, whereas Regency Blue has like a slight indigo purple quality about it. On Tomoe River paper, you can also see a very slight sort of like pinky red sheen. And it's just like it's a beautiful everyday practical color. Given that both Tropical Green and Regency Blue were part of like a limited edition anniversary set, I know I will definitely be sad when these inks are over, but honestly I have a long way to go before I use these bottles up, so I will enjoy them while I have them. And then finally, let's talk about the last brand of inks that I own. These are probably two of my most special inks in that I think they're the two inks that I own that have the strongest sheen. I loved using these in my Hobonichi. I love using them on Tomoe River paper. And I honestly feel bad every single time I try using them in my Stalogy notebook now because the sheen almost completely disappears and I feel like, ugh, it is like such a sad waste. So let's talk about the first Sailor ink I bought. This is Yamadori and it is my perfect ideal turquoisey teal color. When you compare it to Tsukio, you can see that Tsukio is like a lot more blue in tone. Yamadori is like a genuine green leaning teal and it also has just like a bonkers sheen. Like you can definitely see that red sheen caked on the edges of the ink bottle. The sheen was also like really really visible on Tomoe River paper. Like anybody could see it in almost any lighting. I genuinely love this ink so much. There was a time period last year where I literally was only using Yamadori for like four months straight. You could not convince me to put another ink in my pen because I was just like I was in love with it. Yamadori is the reason why I know I'm never going to buy a full-size bottle of Tsukio because if you ask me to use a teal ink, like this is the one that I'm always, always going to go for. This is also the ink that put like sailor inks on the map for me. I am looking respectfully and also covetously because man, so many of the sailor Shikiori inks are so, so beautiful. And after a lot of time and a lot of deliberation and thinking a lot about like what ink I wanted to add to my collection, I ended up buying another one of the Shikiori inks. 
and this is in the color um, I think it's called Tokiwa Matsu the name isn't anywhere in English on the bottle so I'm like going off of memory here and I believe it translates to like pine needles or evergreen pine and that is honestly like such a perfect name for this ink when you compare Tokiwa Matsu to tropical green, you can see that this is genuinely like an evergreen pine color. It's that sort of like deeper, richer forest green. It has a slightly muted, almost like olive-y quality to it. And it's just the perfect green to fill in this like Lamy Safari Savanna pen. It also, like Yamadori, has just this absolutely bonkers pinkish maroonish sheen. And writing on Tomoe River paper with either of these two Sailor Shikiori inks, it feels so special and exciting. And it was one of the reasons why I reached so much for Yamadori last year when I was like struggling through my final semester of undergrad and just trying to get things done because it basically like elevated the humdrum of doing schoolwork into something slightly special and slightly cool and sometimes that little extra ritual, that little extra bit of specialness, it's what you need to like get you through the day. And these got me through some like bonkers days. As much as Pilot has my undying love and loyalty, I think these two Sailor Shikiori inks might be my favorite inks in my entire collection. And uh, there we have it, folks. Those are all of my inks, my pens, even my like daily planners and favorite papers. If you have stayed to the end of this very, very long video, like why do I keep thinking these videos are short? They're never short. I never know when to shut the hell up. But anyway, if you have made it to the end of this very, very long video, please let me know what is currently in your pens. What pens are you using? What do you have them inked up with? What are your favorite fountain pens and inks generally? Because I love this stuff and I always think it's like so much fun when you find somebody who has like the same weird niche interest as you. So uh, please share down below and let's all be excited about pens and inks together. As always, thank you so so much for watching and I hope you have an amazing upcoming week. And even if the rest of your week is messy and imperfect and you end up, let's say, maybe metaphorically or literally spilling ink all over the place and marring like a perfectly beautiful artistic bottle, that's okay. I hope that you are still able to create and experience some truly beautiful moments. Thanks for watching. Bye.